Good afternoon, everyone. This is Todd McPartland with iMarketing Leader. Welcome to this week's webinar training. This week is March 25th, 2014. I'm actually in Chicago this week. And I don't think Chicago got the memo that spring has started. There's actually snow on the ground this morning. So uh, people are still coming in, but I'm going to get started. Not sure how long this one is going to take, so I want to make sure I'm very uh, conscious of your time. So uh, similar to last week's format, we're going to go ahead and go through the presentation. If you have any questions, please just type them in the box, and uh, I'll come back at the end and answer as many questions as we have time for. And whatever I don't have answers for or time for at that point, uh, I'll make sure I get that out to you guys. So this week's webinar is the seven mistakes most local businesses are making with their advertising and then what to do about it. So it's nice to know what the advertising mistakes are, but also going to give you some uh, helpful pointers on what to do with that advertising. So here's a quote from Ted Turner, early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. Uh, advertising is the key to most businesses. I know a lot of people work off referrals. Referrals are just another way of advertising. It's just word of mouth advertising. Uh, you, you do have to work, you know, work like hell to, to get a business working as small business owners. You realize this as a small business owner. I work, I realize this, work a lot of hours, put in a lot of time. And uh, you eventually get to that point where uh, you're not working in your business all the time, but you're working on it. You know, that's kind of a cliche saying nowadays, but uh, that does become more and more true. So uh, what we're going to talk about here are some advertising Um decisions and, and, and changes that you, you might be able to make. So here's another quote that you might have heard um, several different times. Uh, half the money that I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is I don't know which half. Uh, you might have heard that one before. It's, you know, pretty true. You know, we, we do spend, you have to spend a lot of money on advertising. And you're going to hear me talk about tracking a lot. And you need to track to know which part is working so you can stop doing the advertising that's not working and start doing more of the advertising that is working. But you do need to make sure that you're you're tracking and so you can maybe get a little bit better than half. Uh, but you know, half is still good depending on you know what kind of uh, return you're getting on that. So as a small business owner, you know that you, you simply just cannot be wasteful. You, know, you, you can't afford to be wasteful with your with your um, with your budgets. You know, small business owners who work on smaller budgets we just don't have a lot of extra money to be wasted on non-performing ads. Some of the bigger companies, you know, Coca-Cola and Apple, you know, they can spend hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't really put a, a huge dent in in their business because they're bringing in so much revenue. However, as a small business owner, if you're spending a thousand dollars a month, and after six months you either don't know that you actually have any performing ads or worse that you do know and you have no performing ads that that can be six thousand dollars that you just wasted out of your business uh, you need them to be high performing ads since we are working on smaller budgets we do have limited amount of advertising so they need to be very high performing we need them they need to deliver consistent sales as well you know it's not enough just to get a click if you're doing pay-per-click or just to get a like on facebook you need sales out of those you know advertising is great sales are better um, and then this last one you must track it if you don't track you really have no idea what your advertising is doing um, I'll go into a couple stories a little bit later on but it's just it, there's it, it it baffles me of how some other marketers you know website designers are not even putting as simple as Google Analytics on websites um, so that reminds me, if you do not have Google Analytics on your website and you're maintaining your own website, get it installed immediately and Google Webmaster Tools for that matter. And if you have a web development company that's been doing your site for you and they don't have it installed or are not giving you reports or access to it, you might want to think about firing them. And this, that's you know marketing 101. You have to know which traffic is coming to your site and where it is coming from. So then you could track this advertisement. You have no idea if your um, pay-per-click ad is working or your, your SEO is working or your 
your Facebook advertisements working if you're not tracking it. And the only way to track it is when it gets to your site, Google will tell you where that traffic came from. So here are the seven mistakes. And the question is, are you making any of these below? And we're going to go over each of these in detail here. So mistake number one is trying to advertise to everybody. You know, if you try to advertise to everybody, more of the shotgun approach, uh, you really are advertising to nobody because you're not getting that message out. So we want to be more like a rifle. We want to be very, very uh, accurate on who we're advertising to. Even if it's, even if you have a different demographic, you're going to have to need to create different ads. Number two is not taking into account the true value of a customer. I see this a lot where people um, want to try something for 30 days, but the lifetime value of their customer might be two, three thousand dollars. So they're willing to put in two hundred bucks to try to get a two thousand dollar client, and it baffles me that you wouldn't try a little bit harder and spend a little bit more money, even if you broke even on that first customer and spent two thousand dollars. Now you might have the winning formula that can bring you ten of those customers. Uh, number three is focusing only on one form of advertising, uh, contrary to popular belief. Uh, most, or I should say at least we, you know, a lot of online marketers we're, don't only just push online marketing. Sometimes you have to do offline marketing to drive people online. So direct mail, radio, TV, these are all effective forms. And the more form, more different forms of advertising you do, you get a compounding effect. You get that branding. And we'll talk about that branding a little bit more in this. Number four, create weak ads. So just kind of throwing something out there, again, not tracking it, not knowing what's going on. Just, you know, hey, here's the subject and, you know, here here's a little bit of, you know, words in there. That's just, it's, it's not going to cut it today. People are overwhelmed with the amount of advertising that we see. You must create very, very strong ads. Number five is not having a strong landing page. How many of you, I won't call you out on this, but how many of you, if you're doing a pay-per-click ad, are sending the user when they click on it to your homepage. That's a no-no. Most times your homepage is not your strongest landing page. It does not have a very specific call to action. It doesn't match up with the ad that you're actually running. You want to be able to send that user to, that visitor to a very specific page that matches your ad. They're then more likely to take whatever action. Number six is cutting back when times are slow. Um, Advertising might be one of the first things that most people think about cutting when things get tight. Unfortunately, advertising is what also brings in more sales. Number seven, not capturing leads and then following up. You know, the money is in the list. The money is in tracking your people, following um, what they're doing, and being able to to follow up with them. Most people do not buy the first time that that they come to your website. And I'm going to throw a bonus one in here. Number eight, not tracking your advertising. That is a humongous thing and that kind of encompasses all of them, but I just wanted to kind of put it out there again. If you're not tracking, you're just wasting your money to just might as well stop advertising because if you do not know where those leads are coming from and what advertising is working, then you are stuck keep to keep doing what you're doing. Or worse, you might cut something that's actually working. So let's get, jump right in here. Uh, mistake number one, trying to advertise to everybody. So you see this dartboard over on the side. This is what a lot of advertising is, throwing a bunch of darts at a wall and hoping one is going to hit. Um, you're really not advertising to anybody when you try to retire, when you try to advertise to everyone. You really, really need to define your best prospect. And again, in, in previous ones, we've talked about how you figure out your best prospect, their demographics, their psychographics, their interests. You need to narrow that down. You need to create, and I've heard this from a couple um, very, very successful marketers, you need to create an avatar of your ideal user. Get this picture in your mind of what this person is. How old are they? What sex are they? What are their interests? Where, where do they frequently go? Actually create that character in your mind, and then you'll be able to know, have a better idea how to advertise to them. And that goes into the bullet number three. You need to understand their needs and their desires. Then their challenges and fears. These are all trigger points to get people to take action. Majority of the people are only going to take action based on a fear um, or a need or a desire. 
they're not going to do it based on um, a great feeling or you know happiness. A lot of people move when when they're fearful, and then you need to speak directly to them through your targeted advertising. If you're not speaking directly to that one particular person, you know, women between 25 and 30 with children, and you're trying to talk to women without children, that message is completely different. So you got, that's why you want to narrow that, that target down. Even if you are targeting both women with children and without children, that message is different. So what are some of the things you can do? You need to get to know your ideal prospect. So here on the screen, I went out to a, a website called Quantcast, and it's a great website. I highly recommend you go out there and, and try this. And if your website is not picked up or monitored by Quantcast, you find a competitor or somebody who has your ideal client, and you can put their website in. A lot of times, most small businesses don't have enough traffic to actually make any of the, the demographics and uh, psycho psychographics from Quantcast to actually make sense. But you can go find another website where your ideal client hangs out. So this one is from College Humor. And, you know, if, if you've never been out there, you know, it's a website that's college type humor. So it's not really uh, for a lot of people. Um, but if you've, if you plug this information in the Quantcast, what you can see here is it breaks down the sex, the age, children, no children, college, and then ethnicity. So I got a couple of things circled on the screen here first. So male, it's predominantly males go out this, 153 to, to 49. And so the, the higher the number on these, obviously, is the one, and they have the nice little graph next to it that, that shows up um, to show you the winner. And you can see 18 to 24 is the biggest one, followed by 25 to 34. So now you're starting to get that. So, okay, so male, basically 18 to 34, no kids. Obviously, college humor. A lot of college people coming out there. That's why they, you know, a little bit of the younger age as well. Uh, so, 144 to 55 there. So, really predominantly, no kids. No college um, does a little tipping point there, but you know they're, they're kind of even. So, you really probably wouldn't use that in in your demographics. And then here's an interesting one on the bottom. You know, this website is predominantly. Asian, Hispanic, and other. You know, you wouldn't know that if you just went out to the website. It's not like they're they're geared towards these different uh, ethnicities. But looking at this information, you can maybe switch around some targeting. If this, this website was going to try to do some pay-per-click ads, maybe they can go put pay-per-clicks or banner ads, uh, better yet, on websites where Hispanics maybe go to. Or Asians, or you know, in the other category, kind of hard to um, advertise to other because you have no idea who's in there. But it's an interesting website, so I, I really highly recommend you go out to Quantcast.com and plug in your website, and if, if not, plug in find one that actually is uh, has some data. So here are a couple other examples of marketing specifically to them. You know, if you were trying to to market to those, those college kids on Quantcast, you know, these are some of the display ads that they would be interested in. Obviously, um, the hangover part three, very, you know, kind of that same along, that same humor. Maybe they play video games, so you got, you know, Call of Duty. And then Wind Down Wednesday, they're kind of in that age group where they'll, they would probably enjoy drinking and, and hanging out. So those are just different ideas once you, uh, once you can narrow that down. So let's move on to mistake number two, not taking into account the true value of your customer. So I already mentioned this when we were going through them, but you must know the lifetime value of your customer. You take your customer, average number, if it's an order or if it's a client or a patient, average visit, average order, how many times that they're most likely to come, and then over a period of time, a year, a, a five years, 10 years, the lifetime of that customer, you need to know that value. A lot of times we look at orders as one time. So if you're, you know, selling, you know, t-shirts and it's a $20 t-shirt, you might think the lifetime value is $20 for that customer. But if you put that customer into a, a trickle and you hit them up at the holidays and they buy three or four t-shirts 
a year. That's a lot different than a twenty dollars. So you can spend a little bit more to to acquire that customer. Not everybody's going to spend that much. That's why you got to take that average. You got to know what the average lifetime value is. And not knowing this number will actually uh, misrepresent your advertising ROI. And ROI stands for return on investment. If you think that customer in that T-shirt example was only twenty dollars, and you spent twenty dollars, you would think you got you you broke even. You got nothing, right? However, if if they bought two or three more, those two or three more, that's your that's your return on your investment. That first one was the break even. Now they bring, buy three more uh, t-shirts at sixty dollars. Then obviously your profit on top of that, but your gross profit is sixty dollars on that. So important uh, on this one is don't focus just on a one-time sale. Customers will come back for more if you provide great service. You follow up. You put your brand in front of them. They will come back. Most of them don't come back today because you haven't been following up. They forget about you. They're on to the next shiny object, the next person that stepped in front that was willing to follow up with them. So this goes into a lot of our R4 system on that resell, uh, which is you know the third piece of the triangle. You must continue to resell to your customers. And that will increase that lifetime value. Therefore, you can spend more money trying to acquire one of those customers. Mistake number three, focusing only on one form of advertising. So a lot of us with small businesses have a very small budget. Therefore, sometimes it is required that you only focus on one form of advertising. I'm online marketing, so obviously I would lean towards online advertising if you were only going to do one because there are, you can go pretty broad with it. However, when you start to get a little bit of money back and you're going to put more money into advertising, you need to spread that risk, that advertising risk out. Let's take Yellow Pages, for example. They're not as effective as they once were. So it's the last 10 years you've only been advertising in the Yellow Pages, and all of a sudden that form of advertising takes a hit and is no longer effective. But you have no idea how to advertise on anything else. You haven't been trying them. So a lot of times we get comfortable and we only want to work with, oh, this one's working. You know, back in the day, yellow pages, oh, it's working. I'm getting leads. I don't, yeah, I still hear people today. I still get leads from yellow pages. Yeah, but what if they stop printing those? Just like they have a lot of newspapers. Then what are you going to do? Your leads immediately dry up and you can go out of business. You got to start looking for other ones. Direct mail is on here. It's still a great option. And actually, sometimes I, I ask my clients to do direct mail to do offline to direct them online. Send them a special offer and tell them to go out to a special URL to capture it. Now we just brought that offline customer online. It's great. Uh, it still works. It is expensive per piece, right? I mean, there's there's definitely an expense. And sometimes it does lack that online reach. However, if you do it the right way and you drive them online um, you know, with a, a specific call to action, you can really uh, get that. The online reach part is you can't direct mail to everybody in the entire country, right? But you could do display advertising to everybody in the country for much cheaper. Uh, PPC, which is, stands for pay-per-click, it's great and it reaches out there, but only reaches about 8% of the interested prospects. That's because a lot of people don't click on ads. I sit down with business owners all the time talking about different ways to advertise and as soon as I bring up pay-per-click, they say, I never click on those ads. But people do. You know, Google's a billion-dollar company for a reason because marketers are paying per click. That means people are clicking on them in order to uh, make money. Google has to, be, has to have people click on them. So you really want to focus on multiple forms once you can afford it. If you only can afford one, you got to pick one. you got to pick your best one, the best one for your, your niche, your industry, uh, look at what your competitors are doing. Obviously, like, like I said, online advertising is where I think you get the biggest bang for your buck because you can really target those as well. But you know, you have newspapers, you have phone. You know, start dialing for dollars. Direct mail, TV, billboards are just uh, a couple of them to name a few. So let the little lizard, and I know he's a gecko, but let the little lizard be your guide. So here's what we need to do. Advertise everywhere that you can, obviously with a budget, right? Set your budgets aside, figure out what you can 
use and do it than that budget. Spread it out, not too thin. Maybe you start out with one or two, but you want to have a consistent message. How many people, when they see a Geico ad, know 15 minutes can save you 15%, right? As soon as you see a Geico commercial, as soon as you see the Gecko, you, you know that because they have been all over multiple forms of media, right? And they have the same exact message over and over and over again. That's branding, right? When you can flash up a Coca-Cola symbol and you can, you know, say the, um, say the tagline or you see the, the, the Nike symbol and you know exactly what brand it is, Apple, same way. Those are big brands. You know, Geico's a big, big brand, but you can be a big brand locally. There's a lot of ways to do that, um, you know, through billboards and display advertising and uh, pay-per-click and your website and search engine optimization, radio and TV. You can be the big brand in your local area. So we want to focus on you know multiple forms and then hit them with that that same message uh, from every angle. Let's move on to mistake number four: creating weak ads. So poor ads don't perform and they waste valuable dollars. So we're going to go over each of these five keys here. But the five keys to a strong ad are the headline, image, brand, offer, and then call to action. I can look at almost any ad and majority are missing one of those five keys. So the headline, obviously that's the, the first and biggest one. The headline must make them want to read more. It's like the subject line of an email. That is going to get them to open the email. The headline is going to get them to stop and read the rest of your ad. Because in the majority of advertising, the rest of the ad is very small. right? So headlines are the first thing that people see and they want to learn more. When they see that headline, what is it? And it must appeal to their curiosity, fears, or desires. However, you can combine all three of those. You can make even a better ad. So pique their curiosity. Maybe a little bit into the desires and you know give them a little fear and it needs to, to be targeted exactly back to um, your demographics and psychographics so this ad here that I have on the screen the polite way to tell her to shut up right a little controversial so okay that doesn't appeal to everybody obviously it's for diamonds in are they talking to women no they're talking to that man the non-married male, right? Most likely engaged. They're trying to say, come on and buy an engagement ring. Very um, direct response marketing, right? They're very direct. They're saying, hey, if you, you know, you might have heard that, you know, people might not say it, but you, you know, you might, might be thinking that in your head. You might click through to see, hey, wh what is this company all about? Images. Not all advertising, you can do images, especially online. Some of them are just text. However, if you can use images, it must be very high quality images. How many times have you seen an image very, very pixelated because it's very stretched? You spend the extra money, go get an image, take your own high quality images. You know, iPhones are great, but they don't really provide you know, the great stunning images uh, needed for these big banners. You want to, you gotta be creative, unique, and really jarring to catch their eye. You know, if you look at this ad on the right hand side, it's you know, obviously if you're thinking about working out and you were a male, it might, you know, catch females' eyes as well. But if you're a male, hey, that's a great body to, you know, aspire to. You got a picture up there in a little black and white one. So obviously this guy is used to be that skinny. Then you have the yellow, free shipping, nice and bold there. So okay, cool, free shipping. And then what they want you to do? get started big blue button down there right got the offsetting red trunks there so all together it's very visually appealing and tells you exactly what you want all these little pieces of this image is not just the picture of the guy that catches your attention it's the free shipping in yellow it's the blue button all those together might catch different people's attention and it should be relevant to your brand where is this ad from bodybuilding.com. That's their logo up on the top. That's on their marketing, right? Don't lose sight of your branding. Don't don't waste money on marketing if you're not going to try to build your brand. Branding is the key. It's very, very hard to track ROI, but 
once you get that brand recognition out there, advertising becomes a lot easier. Uh, and here it is. Make sure you incorporate your brand. You know, don't forget to include things like the voice of, of your company, a logo, the tagline, your colors. You know, those are all very unique to your company. You need to make sure that when you put them in there, they stand out. If you use green like this Geico ad, use that green everywhere, right? Um, and this helps cement your company into your prospect's mind. Most people do not buy the first time. Most people are actually not active buyers, especially when they're online or flipping through a magazine. They're doing more of a passive. You're passively marketing to them. So you got to do all the sub uh, subliminal things that actually cement your company into their mind. So when they think of you, when they think of flowers, they think of you, right? When they think of pest control, they think of you. And they think of your color. And they couldn't think of anybody else because you've been in front of them so many times with your brand. This is what I see a lot of advertising misses, including an irresistible offer, especially online, but other places as, as well. You need to reward the person for interacting. You know, give them a discount, a promotion, a, you know, have a, run a contest, give a free gift. You know, whether they come in and, and mention your ad, whether they have to do something online, you must give them something in order for them to, to interact with you. Everybody wants something for free. Uh, they're actually not giving you something for free. You can see on, on this ad here, this, this landing page, you know, it's an opt-in, right? Okay, you can see some kind of massages. Okay, you look up in the left, it's for a spa. And then over on the right-hand side, you know, you can enter to win, right? Oh, okay, yeah. You know, if you're interested in spa, you might be entered to win, asking for your first name and your, your last name and your email and phone number and zip code. Now they're asking for a lot of information here. So when someone lands on this page, they would have to decide, is a chance to win this more valuable than my information? You know somebody's going to market to you, right? It's not just to win. They're trying to collect all this information to market to you. So you have to put your information in there because you don't want to put fake information in there just in case you do win. But asking all that information, is that too much, right? That's why you have to test. You have to test landing pages as well. Uh, which is you know a topic for a different day, um, but you need to test is that is that too much information? And as soon as a visitor feels that what you're offering, that irresistible offer, that it is actually truly ir irresistible, is worth more than what you're asking for in return, then you then you got them. So contests and sweepstakes are a very popular way to do that. Next, you got to end with a clear call to action. Don't put multiple calls to action on there. Right? You need to have only one call to action per advertising. This one on the right-hand side, join now. It doesn't say join now or call this phone number. Right? It doesn't say join now or oh, click on this other button over here. Very specific. Tell them to do one. Confused mind is not going to buy. They're not going to take action. So leave zero room for confusion. But you want to be very clear and precise. Exactly what you want them to do. You want in this ad... You want them to join now. You know, it says, your work week is boring. Your free time shouldn't be. I have no idea what this ad's for. But, hey, if I think my work week is boring and I don't want my free time to be, I'm going to click this join now button. Is it a dating site? Is it a bar? Who knows? But if that interests me, and then there's some alcohol, a uh, picture of some, a drink here. If that interests me, that kind of uh, picture, then I'm going to click that join now button and see what happens. They're not asking for any information on here, right? Obviously, it's a two-stage opt-in that they're going to click that and it's going to take you to another page, a landing page, where you're going to most likely fill out some information. But you're willing to, to, to take that next step. All right, that was mistake number four. Let's move on to mistake number five, not having a strong landing page. So that's where I mentioned before for a raise of hands of who drives majority of their traffic to their homepage. No, 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 no. Your homepage is not your typical landing page for advertising. You want to have a very specific landing page that matches your advertising. You want to make sure that you can capture those leads, you know, whether it's an email form or a phone number, um, or make a direct sale if it's an e-commerce, obviously. Like an e-commerce store, why would you drive them to your homepage if you were advertising this um, 
this printer ink over here. You take them right to the printer ink. They clicked on an ad of that printer ink because they want that printer ink. Take them right to the page where they can buy that. You know, searchers and online, we're, we're lazy people. You make me click two or three times, I'm clicking back and I'm going somewhere else. Send them right where you need them to go. So here's an example um, of a landing page. They're not leaving, you know, much, much uh, in, for up for interpretation. There's a big green button that says products and pricing. So if you land on this page because of a different ad, and now you want to know more, you can click on that button and be taken right to the products and pricing. Right underneath that, you can see that they were featured in a bunch of information. Looks like they have some testimonials on this page. You know, it's a typical. Um, marketing landing page you know high quality image to get the person to stick and look more you know title up there your morning ritual and then a clear call to action on the button so there's five main purposes for a landing page number one is to get a visitor to click and go to another page right uh, Google wants most visitors to visit more than two pages when they come to your site they count that as a, a good visit, right? If you go to one page and you click on the back button, they count that as a bounce and it actually hurts your uh, traffic ranking. So you'll, you might give them like on that previous example, click here to go to products and pricing. They could have put their products and pricing right there on that main page. Somebody looks at that and they click back. Now Google thinks it's a, a bad link, but they might have called you right there, right? Um, so a lot of times you might have a what they call a squeeze page. You hear that a lot, trying to squeeze some information out. Uh, we'll talk about the Netflix one that's on the screen here in a moment. Number two, you want to get a visitor to buy. If you're an e-commerce store, um, if they can buy online, whether you're using a PayPal button or you actually have a built-in shopping cart, that could be a purpose of that landing page. Get them to buy. Uh, get them to pick up the phone and, and, and call you. And that's uh, number three. Give a visitor. Get a visitor to give you permission to follow up with them through email, phone number, etc. You see that a lot in, in advertising, in landing pages, what they call the opt-in form. Get a visitor to tell a friend. You see the, the uh, social share buttons. You know, tweet this, like this. That's telling friends, right? That's the new way of telling friends. Is you, you don't have to go pick up the phone and, and call and call Susie. You can click that you like this page, and Susie's going to see that next time she's on Facebook. And number five, get a visitor to comment or give them some sort of feedback. So a lot of times if you're doing a product launch, you might have testimonials and comments. You want people to really interact on that page. And you, know, you might have that tied into, uh, you know, say, your Facebook or whatever. But sometimes you just want visitors to comment you know, and kind of get that interaction. And the more interaction that's on your website, but it's a blog or whatever, the next time another visitor comes there, they'll see that there's a lot of interaction. So let's take a look at this Netflix ad. It might be a little bit small there, but you can go out to netflix.com and you can see this. This is not their homepage, right? But a lot of times, even if you type in netflix.com and they'll redirect you off to this page. This is their squeeze page. And what do they want you to do? Start a free trial, right? Fill in your information right here. Don't even ask for the credit card. They do a very good job with um, direct response marketing. You want to watch movies? Here, fill this out. You can start watching movies right now. So think about how you can uh, use those these five purposes of your landing pages. And the same principles for a good ad also applies to landing pages. You know, an engaging headline. You know, very simple yet very specific copy. And benefits over features. Right? What are the benefits for the user? Don't talk about your company. You know, unless it's very very valuable to them. They want to know what's in it for them. Must have an irresistible offer. Again, we talked about that with the opt-ins. If I'm going to give you my name or at least my first name and my email address, whatever you're offering in return, I better think it's more valuable than my, my email because I know you're going to market to me. And then the clear call to action. Buttons. In this example here, you got the apply now. You see the heading. Your child you know, can have health benefits. And then some benefits down the side with the words point to number three. So same idea as good ads, you just have more land, you know, more real estate on, on your landing pages. Mistake number six, 
cutting back when times are slow. Now this is this is very common, and you know, I've, I've fallen in this trap myself. You know, you gotta stop limiting yourself to short-term thinking. Oh, I'll run an ad for 30 days and see how it goes. If it doesn't work, oh well, I guess it doesn't work. I guess online advertising doesn't work. PPC doesn't work. Advertise or radio doesn't work. TV doesn't work. Very very short term. First of all, you probably weren't tracking. But running ads today are actually an investment in your in your company's future. Because most people aren't going to buy today. Right? You're building that brand. Right? There is some, you know, direct response marketing, but there's a lot of branding marketing. Those are like two main types, you know, passive and active marketing. You gotta know which one you're doing and what the reason is why you're doing it. So cutting back on advertising today. You can actually lose business tomorrow. You know, obviously, tomorrow being the next day or next year, but cutting back on advertising today will affect your business in the future. And mistake number seven here: not capturing leads and then following up. You might be capturing leads, but are you following up with them in an automated fashion? Right. Building a list is extremely, extremely, extremely valuable. There are companies that can make millions of dollars by sending out an email because they have a million people on their email list. But they built that list over time. It doesn't happen tomorrow, right? Most prospects, and I've said this many times, they're not going to buy from you the first time. Maybe they're just checking you out. Maybe they saw an ad. Maybe somebody told them about you. You know, Maybe they're going to look up your reputation. But they're not going to buy that first time, most of them. So how are you going to follow up? It's going to let them go away and say, oh, man, the one in a hundred that are going to buy from me, I'm waiting for them. No, you want to follow up because they were qualified enough to come to you the first time. Now, maybe they're not interested. Then they'll opt out of your mailing list, and that's okay. But you want to stay in front of and stay top of mind for the people who actually were qualified, and maybe they just didn't buy today. They didn't need your services today. So very critical, you want to capture leads, even if it's a phone call. You need to build into your system processes, whether if it's not you answering the phone, you must get the person's first name and email address and phone number, right? Hey, in case we get disconnected, can I have your phone number? If it doesn't come up on caller ID. You know, if you're selling something or if you have something to give away, hey, I'd love to put you on my newsletter. You know, newsletters, most people don't like newsletters, right? Most of them are, are junk. Can I give something else away? Hey, can I send you a copy of my book? Right? Or I got this free ebook. Can I get your email address? Boom. Now they just give you permission to put them on a list. Let them opt out later on if they want to. So here are a couple of best practices for building a high quality email list. Offer a bribe. Um, in my book, this is called The Bribe in the Ladder. You know, that first um, that first initial engagement. How are you going to give? What are you going to give them in return for their information? An ebook, a white paper, a coupon, a hardcover book. Uh, you got to got to figure that out. You can host a webinar. You know, here's an example. I'm hosting a webinar, right? Or a local event. You know, we hosted Monsters of Marketing event. You know, that's that's a great way to build an email list and then to invite people who are on your email list. You can promote online contests. There are so many ways to do contests nowadays with Facebook and Google Plus and LinkedIn. I mean, you can do almost everywhere. You can do some sort of uh, contest. And then you can cross promote with other businesses to build your list. And then once you have a list, right? If you're an HVAC company and then you have a plumbing company, there's a good chance that somebody who uses one of those services will need the other one right if you are both building lists you can offer a discount if you're the HVAC company you can send out an email on behalf of your plumber friend and you know JV partner and say hey so and so's plumbing is offering 10% off if you need plumbing more likely you know plumbing is kind of a, a, a thing that you need it right away maybe the plumbing company can send out hey is your you know HVAC in need of a tune-up, right? Call my guy over here and get you know 10% off, 20% off. And also to build the lists, right? So if the HVAC company didn't have a list, the plumber can send out his, sending him over to the HVAC's very highly optimized landing page, 
and get people to opt in. But then here is the, the part where a lot of people fail. They might collect the list, but they never follow up, right? It takes 12 touches, seven touches, whatever number, it's more than one touch, right? You must do this, and you really want to do this on more of an automatic uh, approach. You know, we all get busy in our businesses. We're, we don't have time to go, oh, yeah, I got to send you know Susie an email today because it's the fifth day after she signed up. There are so many automated pieces of software to build your list. You just need to use one of them, you know, Constant Contacts or um, Office Autopilot or, you know, any of these. Look into them. Find the one that meets your, your pricing. MailChimp is a free one. It's not automated for free, but you, at least you can do mass, uh, mass emailing on that. But you want to deliver remarkable, very high quality, helpful and relevant content. Don't just keep trying to sell to them. That last point there. Don't oversell. Now buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. You know, that just irritates people. They're just going to opt out. right? And you want to reward them for being on your list. Offer stuff that they can't find in other places. Oh, here's $25 off. Yeah, so it was on your website and so was it everywhere else. No, how about $30 off? Thanks for being a member of my on my list. You get $30 off, take an extra five. Right? But then not always be selling. Right? The rule I kind of work, you know, one in three, right? You can soft sell in, the, in them, but one in three. Give them two or three good pieces of high quality email content and then maybe throw in a soft sell, depending on your business. So I'll wrap it up here. You know, how are you doing? Here are the here are the problems again. Trying to advertise to everyone. Are you doing that? Not taking into account the true value of your customer. Are you are you looking at your customer as a one off purchase? If there are one off purchase, you need to go back to the other video and and listen on the resell and figure out how you can build a function of either recurring income or reoccurring sales. Number three is focusing only on one form of advertising. And once the budget allows for it, I know a lot of us in the beginning don't have the budget for it, but once the budget allows for it, we need to start looking at other forms of advertising. You never know when one of those is going to stop. Google starts having problems tomorrow, or Facebook starts having problems, and all of a sudden, PPC doesn't work as well. Right? If your business was all wrapped around pay-per-click, and all of a sudden you're starting to get um, less value, less, less good customers out of that, you could be in trouble. Or more competition might go into those same forms of advertising and they might have more money right you got to be able to you got to be able to move you're a small company you should be able to be pretty agile with that number 4 they're creating weak ads focus on your ads the headline the image call to action right irresistible offer all of those different pieces those five different pieces you want to focus on those and make sure that you have a really strong ad don't waste your ad don't waste your money Number five, they're not having a strong landing page. Don't send them to your home page, please. Develop a specific page as a landing page, even if it's just a specials page that you send people to. Match it to your advertising. It's the best way to do it. If they clicked on your ad, there's a good chance they're going to go uh, further and click on something else on your website. Number six, they're cutting back when times are slow. Uh, reminder that you know advertising is an investment. You know, there there are it, there is some direct response. Hey, if I if I do this much in pay per click, I'll get this many clicks, which I should make this much money. But there's also the branding in the more passive forms of advertising, which are building up your brand for the long term. So try to think long, far out. Make sure that you can afford that, but don't think very very short term. Again, it goes back to number two there of the true value of that customer. How much can you spend on that particular uh, form of advertising? To get somebody, and number seven, not capturing leads and then following up. Got to capture the leads first with the irresistible offer, but then you must follow up with them. And number eight, which is the overarching idea of this, you must track, or none of this advertising makes sense. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have the best advertising in the world. You'll never know it if you don't track. All right, so you might be making some mistakes. Now is the time to correct them, right? You know about the seven mistakes, eight if you count the not tracking. Do that today. If you're not tracking um, your analytics, that's one of the hardest things when uh, 
clients come to me and say, well, how much traffic can we get? I don't know. You haven't been tracking your website for the last two years. We don't have a benchmark. We got to create that benchmark. If you're a seasonal company, even worse. You got to wait a year to build a benchmark, right? So install Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, please reach out to us. We're here to help. Um, if you're in, in need of some marketing, you know, we can help you out with that. Do have time for a couple questions here? Um, let me take a look. So here's a question. How should we design our ads? Should we change them based on different sizes and different media? Uh, that, that's actually a great question. You know, there's two schools of thought. Use every available space. And some are very simple. You need to look at the other forms of advertising. So let's take Facebook for an example. If you look at Facebook and you see the ads in Facebook on the right-hand side, majority of them are completely taking up the very small couple inches that you have. So in that case, you might want to go simple, do a lot more white space, but you have to have something bold that, that, that sticks out, a very high-quality image. And you do need to um, think of different sizes. You know, if you're doing uh, banner advertisement, for example, display advertising, you know, if it's the banner across the top, that's going to display your information differently than if it's the skyscraper banner that's on the side or the square banner, right? So you want to you wanna know that if it's a full page ad in a magazine compared to a half a page ad, how much information, you don't want to take that same amount of information and crunch it down into a, a half page ad, or if you're able to go get a, a full page ad, you don't want to say, okay, well here's the information, just kind of spread everything out. You might need to recreate it, but remember, branding. You want to keep your brand consistent. You want to have those five pieces. You want to have that headline and the imaging, you know, the imagery, especially like a newspaper ad or a magazine ad, you could do a lot of imagery in that. So let's uh, see what else we have here. So got a question here. We're only doing AdWords. So are you saying that we should be doing other forms as well? Absolutely. If you have the money, even if you don't have the money, if you're doing AdWords, you must have some, some money in, in advertising. I would take a small portion of that money if you don't have extra money in your budget and start looking at other forms of advertising. You never know when that, that AdWords, you know, Google makes a change. They make changes all the time. They make a change that drastically affects your business. Uh, I knew a guy once who was doing a lot of, uh, when the acai berry was very popular. He's doing a lot of advertising on Google with the acai berry and the health benefits and all this. And then Google started whacking all those because of, you know, health can, you know, health people, oh, you're claiming this and you're claiming that and, and you're not a doctor. And his business crumbled in that. He had to find another form of advertising quickly. So don't be caught in, in, in that, you know, just because Google's great today and you're bringing in a lot of customers, you need to take a portion of those profits and you need to put them back into something else you should be doing. If you're doing Google AdWords, you probably have enough money or that means you're pretty strong online. You should be doing some form of content marketing, you know, to help with your, your search engine ranking. Uh, you could be doing display advertising. Uh, that's banner ads. You should be doing those online. You should be remarketing. You know, that's a topic for another day. I mentioned that before, but you must be doing remarketing if you're doing all this. Uh, so, yeah, if you have the money, and then and those are all online ones, but you can do offline as well. Do some TV or some radio. Uh, let's see, another question here. Looks like the last one. So the other forms of advertising that you're referring to are sometimes branding types. Can you give some examples? Yeah, branding. So there's really two, two ways, two types of advertising. Direct response, which means here's an ad. This is what exactly I want you to do. And then there's other advertising, and that's a, a much more active one. That's pay-per-click, right? Somebody's searching for a very specific word, and then you're saying, Google, I want to bid for that word because I know when they're searching for that word, and it must be a buyer keyword like buy, you know, whatever, or emergency plumber, right? People aren't looking up for an emergency plumber so they can go put it in their iPhone next time they have an emergency. They have an emergency today. That's direct response, right? You can do a, a direct response pay-per-click ad for a very active buyer, they're wanting to do that right now. But other forms of advertising are branding 
advertising where you're you want to be you're trying to get out there as many times as possible to be top of mind for that particular customer or client uh, radio TV you know billboards display advertising on the online side direct mail pieces you know direct mail can kind of go either way if you're telling them you know here but they you, you're sending out a piece of mail you have no idea if they're they're interested in buying today right but you're putting your message your consistent message and your brand in front of them all the time so you definitely need to know what what type of advertising you're doing because the result is different right direct response you can you can measure an ROI a return on your investment I spent this much this is how many people I drove here this is how many people took action and clicked and this is how many people actually purchased what was my rate of return Branding effort advertising, if you're doing TV, for example, or if you're doing um, display advertising, you say, okay, for these 100,000 impressions, how many people bought? You have no idea, right? Maybe they called you. Oh, where was the last time you saw me? Uh, I saw you on the radio, right? People are going to think of the last time. How did you hear about us? They're going to think of the last time. So you definitely need to know the difference between your, your branding and your direct response, which is your passive versus your active advertising majority is really passive it's branding that's why it's so important and so critical to have your consistent message in every form of advertising consistent colors and you know consistent uh, logos so people when they see that color and that logo it resonates with them it sticks in their mind next time they need a plumber you're gonna be the one to call all right we're just about at the 130 mark here so I want to be very aware of your time I don't see any other questions um, I really appreciate everybody uh, coming on here. I actually wanted to talk about next week real quick. Um, actually, while I have my website up here, you know, here's an example on my website of when someone, if someone lands on my website, very specific, I want them to do something, right? Fill this out and you get a free copy of my book. Okay, well, to get a free copy of my book, I need your name, your email address, and your address, right? I'm collecting that information, obviously, so I can do some passive um, and active marketing. But I'm giving them something in return. So if someone comes to my website and says, wow, a free book, sure, that's worth 20 bucks. I'll give them my information. Um, and then obviously the free training down there. And then here's a form of what everybody who registered has seen. This is a very specific landing page. So if I do pay-per-click or a LinkedIn ad, to this very specific page I'm talking about my webinars my free webinars and I'm sending them right to this page I'm not making them go to the home page and then click on the the free training I'm sending them right to the page with a very specific call to action you know high quality image arrow coming down here what do you want me to do okay there it is sign me up All right anyway that was a little side tangent I meant to talk about that earlier so let's go over here to training and then online training and this is where you can see what's actually coming up so next week we're gonna start going into the chapters of my book so I'm gonna walk through every chapter uh, one a week for the next I think it's 10 weeks and we're gonna go in great detail of what it means you know explain it some more so next week is it's high school all over again which is the first chapter all about reputation if you were on it last week or if you watched the video from last week, reputation is the foundation of our R4 marketing system, and it needs to be the foundation of your business. Reputation is the foundation of your business. You just need to know that it's the foundation, and online reputation is absolutely critical. So it's a, it's a you know, can't miss. Um, if you have to miss it, make sure that you uh, watch the replay. You know, it's going to be you know uh, some very insightful information there. So with that, it is 125, and I want to get you back to work and back to business so you can start making some more money. And I hope you enjoyed this. You know, please you know send us some of your feedback on this. You know, it's kind of one-way conversations besides the questions, but I love the interaction. Go tell your friends. Have some other business owners come on here. I love the the different types of questions. So have a great rest of the day. Stay warm, unless you're in Texas, it's already warm. If you're in Chicago, stay warm, and I'll talk to you next week.